Hello and welcome back to episode number 6 of my Fortnite tutorial series. Today we are going to add the state of the player and implement different functionality based on what state the player is in currently. So let's take a quick look at Fortnite again. In Fortnite there are two states, the combat and the construction state, that you can switch using a specified key. In Fortnite that is the Q key or by selecting a building. Also the key used for switching and the icon of the state to switch to are displayed in the main widget. Then in general you have a crosshair in Fortnite that also changes when you start going into construction mode and then back to combat mode and finally the large version of the currently selected resource widget only appears when you're in construction mode. So let's go ahead and implement all of that functionality. Let's start by adding the display of the key to switch a state and the icon of the state to switch to in our main widget. Let's go to widgets w underscore main and we will start with a horizontal box. Drag that in. We can just call that state box. Doesn't need to be a variable because that will always be shown and the box itself won't update. Let's anchor that to the right center and also make it size to content. Then we'll give it an alignment of one in X, zero in Y and set the position to minus 428 in X and 232 in Y. Then we first want to add the key used for switching in here and we will start with a size box for that. Check width and height override 34 by 34 and horizontally and vertically align that to the center. Then in our size box, basically we have a border and on top of that you see the hotkey. So in this case Q, create that. We also want to start with a border, add that onto our size box. And first off, let's remove the padding for the content. So enter a zero in here and the content should be aligned to the center in both axes. Then go to brush and under image, look for the hotkey border, select it. And what you will see is that it looks kind of weird because the texture is 28 by 28 pixel and the size box is a little bit larger so it's scaled up. However, we can increase the size of this texture without losing quality by going to the draw S and here select box. It reads draw a 3 by 3 box where the size and the middle stretch based on the margin. Alright, so some pixels here that we can select right now will be repeated to prevent the loss of quality and the margin we will add is just 0.25. Now you see that looks way better. What the 0.25 here means basically is that after a quarter of the full image, the part will be tiled until it fits the whole size. All right, let's add a text onto our border, which will be the hotkey. So for text, let's just type in Q. The text also doesn't need to change, so we don't have to make it a variable, but let's decrease the size to 18 maybe. And just to make the actual key stand out a little bit more, we'll go to the border, and under brush color lower that alpha to 0.75 or something. Then to add a bit of empty space to the right, let's add a spacer onto the state box. Maybe increase the size in X to 10. Then we can add our state icon. So first off, get a size box. Drag that onto the state box. Check width and height override again. Let's use an icon of 35 by 35 pixel. And then add an image onto the size box. That will change, so it has to be a variable, and let's call that state icon. By default, you will be in combat state, but this icon here is used to show the state that we would switch to using Q. So that has to be the icon underscore construction that was also included in the asset pack. And let's also add the crosshair while we're in the main widget. That's really simple to do. You just add an image, and that always has to be at the very center of the screen. So the anchor will be the center, then the alignment will be 0.5 in both dimensions. And if you then reset the position in X and Y to zero, it will appear at the very center. Let's check size to content. Let's call it crosshair. And the default will be crosshair combat. Now we can compile save. I already mentioned that the large version of the currently selected resource is only visible when we're in construction mode. So let's quickly add a function to hide and show it. Let's go into the graph, add a function and call it show current resource. It will need one input, type boolean called show question mark. And the only thing we'll do here is grab our current resource box, set visibility, and then off of our boolean show, we want to select. Currently it's a wildcard, so no specified data type drag the return value onto the invisibility and now you can select whatever visibilities you want to use. 
If it's false, so we want to hide it, then the visibility will be hidden. And if it's true, we want to use self hit test invisible. If you don't know what self hit test invisible is, basically it's visible but not to the mouse cursor. However, the child widgets of that current resource box could be visible to the mouse cursor. If you don't want that to happen, that would be hit test invisible. So select self hit test invisible. Let's add a return node, compile, save. And that's it for our main widget. So we can close that. Now to keep track of what state we're actually in right now, you could use a boolean for example. However, maybe someone wants to expand upon the system and add a third state and then a boolean would be pretty problematic. So to set it up in a more elegant way, we will go to our blueprints, enums, right click and under blueprints create a new enumeration. Let's call that e underscore player states. And right now there are only two states that are possible and these are combat as our default state and then construction or building whatever you want to call it hit save and close the enumeration of course we also have to create a variable for that in our player so select our third person character and open the blueprint let's add one variable called state or also current state if that's more descriptive for you variable type will be e underscore player states Hit compile and save. We also need a function to update the crosshair and state icon in the main widget. So add a function called update state display. We can update the crosshair first. So in our main widget, grab the crosshair and then set brush from texture. You can select the match size. The crosshairs are all at the same size. And for the texture here, we have to select one based on our state. So grab your state, use a select node, drag the return value onto the texture. If we're in combat mode, we want to use the crosshair combat. And if we're in construction mode, crosshair construction. Then let's update the state icon. So copy the main widget, paste it, grab your state icon and also set brush from texture can check match size again hook that up here and as i already explained we always want to select the icon of the state that we're not in currently to indicate what we would switch to let's copy our select node paste it connect the state again hook up the return value to the texture and for combat that will be icon underscore construction for construction, that will be icon underscore, I think it's called combat. Yep, here it is. After that, we also have to decide whether we want to show the current resource. So grab our state. And to add different behavior based on it, you use what is called a switch node. Switch on E underscore player states. And that will give you output pins here, execution pins, based on how many entries the state enum has currently only these two. If we're in combat state means we have to hide that resource widget. So grab your main widget and call show current resource with the show boolean being false. All right. After that, we can already return. Let's copy and paste that for our construction. But this time check the show boolean. And one thing we want to do before we show it actually is to update the current resource. So off of the main widget call update current resource. It will be asking you for player resources and that is just a BPC underscore player resources. So connect that, compile and save. And then we also need a function to change the state. And of course that needs an input of what it should change to of the type E underscore player states. Let's call that something like new state. And one thing we need to check first, so let's add a branch, is that the new state is something different than our current one. So off of it, search for unequal and then hook up the state, connect that and hook up the boolean to the condition. If it's false, just return. If it's true, however, we want to set the state to the input and also call our update state display function and copy paste the return node. Pass save. We also have to update the state display when we begin playing. 
So on event begin play, right after we promoted the main widget, let's add some space here. And first off, we want to set state to combat, that's our default state, and then update state display. You could be wondering now why we're not just calling the change state function because that already contains updating the state display, but it could be that our state here is set up with combat as the default value. And then if we have a look at the change state function, it will go to the false path of the branch and just don't do anything. So it's much more safer to call the update state display function here explicitly. Then we have to add a key event for Q. So what this will simply do is change the state. And for the new state, we want to grab our current state and select one, plug the return value into the new state. If we're in combat state, we want to change to construction. If we're in construction, change to combat. Okay, it's pretty simple. Also, we already implemented the functionality to select a different resource. However, in Fortnite, that only works if you're in construction mode. So to achieve that behavior, we'll go to the right mouse button. And before we select next resource, we actually grab our state and add a switch node. Hook that up to the press and only connect the construction execution pin to select next resource. Pile and save. Then there's only one thing we have to fix now, and that is that our player resources currently handles updating the larger version of the resource in the main widget. And it would also update that if we're in a completely different state and not seeing the current resource at all. So that's just a waste of performance. Let's fix that. We'll go to classes to the player resources. And here we've got the event update resource display. And there is a branch before we update the current resource. So what we want to do is check whether the selected resource is equal to the resource to update. And there is a second condition, which will be that the player character's state is equal, choose the equal enum, not byte, and it should be equal to construction. Hook that up to the end and the end to the condition. Then we can compile, save, close our class, and it should be working. So let's hit play. Currently our wood is selected and the larger version of the resource is hidden. If we right click, nothing happens. You also see the Q key and the icon of the construction mode. So if I hit Q, that will change to the combat icon. I also see the wood right now. By hitting the right mouse button, I can cycle through all of our different resources increase them and you see it updating directly. If I hit Q again, resource is hidden now and I can also update it, then change the state back to construction and it updated here to 900. Also, let's focus on the crosshair here really quickly. Currently that's the building one with that little arrow pointing to the ground. If I hit Q, that will go back to the default. All right, that's it for setting up the state of the player. In the next video, we will already start to work on the core of the system, which is the building manager and the building classes. So see you then.